Whoo, friends! It's really hot these days, isn't it? Here in the Netherlands, at least, it seems to be tropical. It's too hot to study. It's too hot to work. I'd better put on my swimming pants and go to the beach or cool down at a nice spa. Which is exactly what Beethoven did in 1812 during his holiday, on which he wanted to meet one of his idols. A big figure of German culture. This is episode 32 of Beethoven 250 in 52 posts, part one of Beethoven and Goethe. If you're rich and famous and you want to spend your holiday in Europe, places like Saint-Tropez, Monte Carlo, Monaco or Nice are uh, the right places to go and spend your money. But in Beethoven's time, as a celebrity, you had to find a place a bit closer to home. And for the old and the nouveau riche of Vienna, one of those places was Teplis, which is in the Czech Republic. Still quite a journey though, about 400 kilometers from Vienna between Prague and Dresden. Teplis is a spa town to which Beethoven was sent in 1811 to recover from a period of intense work. In the previous year, he had been working on incidental music for a play by one of his idols, one of the most prominent figures of German culture, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, intellectuals and writers of Germany at the beginning of the 19th century. Beethoven has built his reputation as well, but still he could only dream of meeting his much older idol Goethe one day. And the chance of bringing such a meeting closer to becoming reality came for Beethoven in 1809. He was then asked to compose music for a production of one of Goethe's plays, Egmont. Egmont tells the story of the 16th century nobleman Lamoral, Count of Egmont of the Low Countries. The Low Countries being the 17 provinces, better known as the Netherlands and Belgium together. And for my Dutch viewers, uh, Egmont is the southern equivalent of Willem van Oranje, our father of the nation. The play tells the story of Egmont's resistance to the Spanish occupation. Egmont tries to negotiate with the Spanish, with Count Alfa, but he is then captured and he is sentenced to death. And his beheading in Brussels means the start of the Eighty Years' War. Beethoven might have had several personal reasons to write music to the play Egmont. First of all, it's set in Flanders, which is the region where Beethoven's ancestors were from. Second of all, uh, the place where Egmont is beheaded, the Grote Markt in Brussels, is the same place where Beethoven's great-great-grandmother was executed. But most importantly, writing music to the words of such a great man, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, might very well bring a meeting with him closer for Beethoven. And to accomplish that, Beethoven asks the help of Bettina Brentano. Bettina Brentano was a writer herself and she knew Goethe personally. Goethe was a regular visitor at Teplis, the spa where Beethoven would go in 1812, and Bettina already goes there in 1810 with the gift of Beethoven 
namely three songs he had composed for Goethe to introduce himself. Kleine Blumen, kleine Streuen hier mit leichter Hand Gute junge Frühlingsgötter Tempelt auf ein luftig Band But all these efforts to meet Goethe in 1810 and 1811 were unsuccessful for Beethoven. And Goethe didn't even reply to the gift of the three songs, which is weird because Goethe usually was very strict and very polite in his communications. Also for the Egmont music, only the overture of it has survived as a successful concert piece. But we know Beethoven a bit right now, don't we? And you wouldn't expect him to leave it there, would you? Which he of course doesn't, as we will find out next week in the next episode of Beethoven 250 in 52 Posts, the second episode of this mini-series Beethoven and Goethe. Enjoyed this one? Like and share it with your friends, subscribe to my channels to support it, donate if you really, really, really want to support it, and um, have a nice swim, have a nice cooling down. See you next week.